Did you know it's easy to create tutorial videos for YouTube using nothing but free software? Not only that, but you don't even have to own a camera or be an editing master to produce great videos. I created a simple three-step process anyone can follow to create good tutorials using totally free tools. Tutorial channels are some of the most popular channels on YouTube. You can find one to do pretty much anything you could possibly imagine from painting a car to programming a 3D printer. The most important thing you need is a passion for the skill you want to teach and a bit extra time on your hands. I've spent years creating exactly the same kind of tutorial content I'm going to show you how to make today. That's easily more than a thousand videos. So you know I've cut out all the fat and made the system as simple as humanly possible for anyone to follow. We have a lot to get to, so you know what? Let's get to it! You're gonna need to decide what type of tutorial you wanna create before we get into the three steps. One is a live camera tutorial where you film footage of doing something or walk your viewers through the process. The second is a screen capture tutorial where you capture footage on your monitor to explain how to do something on the computer. Now I'm gonna break down in this video how to do each one, but it is important to know which one you wanna do because of the different tools that are involved. You can do a screen capture tutorial with nothing more than a computer and a microphone. For a live camera tutorial, you're gonna need some sort of camera, some lights, and a tripod. Now the camera doesn't need to be anything fancy. In fact, your cell phone camera will work just fine. Now once you decide on the type of tutorial you wanna do, we can dive into the three steps. Step one, outline or script your video. Your video will have at least two distinct segments, probably three, the intro. This is where you tell your audience as quickly as possible what the video is gonna be about. The body, this is where you deliver on the intro and teach the audience what you promised in the title, thumbnail, and intro. The close, this is where you introduce the audience to another video that they might want to watch and ask them to subscribe and say goodbye. Some people would say the close isn't necessary. I always use one so you know where I stand on this particular argument. Now you can script using bullet points outlining the general things that you want to show in the video or you can fully script it out. It's really up to you. Here's what my scripting looks like for this particular video. I separate out the scripted segments from the screen capture segments, which are not scripted in my content. The screen capture voiceover stuff is marked SCVO in the script, and the rest of the dialogue is meant to add context to the screen capture clips and move the video along. Once you have your script written out, we can move on to step two. Step two, capturing our footage. For live video footage, you want to be sure you have a microphone that will clearly pick up your audio and a tripod. Make sure what you want to show is brightly lit. You don't have to actually appear in any of the footage if you don't want to. You can easily just show your hands and point to whatever it is that you want to show. A tripod is really important because it helps with lighting and will also make it much better for the viewer to watch. Shaky video just isn't pleasing. All that's left is to film your scenes and transfer the footage to your computer for processing. For the folks looking to do screen capture tutorials, we're going to use a free tool called OBS. There is a link in the description so you can download it and check it out and follow along. That is the best way to learn. Let me show you how to install it and use it to capture your screen. We're going to go ahead and start right here with the window capture tool and it is OBS Studio, Windows, Mac or Linux. You can also use this to live stream. I have lots of videos about how to do that if you want to check them out. We're going to go ahead and use Windows. So we're just going to click here and it's going to go to our downloads folder. And all we have to do is go into our downloads folder, double click, and it's going to run the installer. You're going to get an administrative prompt that you can't see, but you're just going to click yes. You're going to come up to this window and you're going to click next. Then you're going to decide exactly where you want to install it. Just click next and install OBS. It's really that simple. I can't do it here because I'm actually using OBS to record this screen. But there isn't anything more complicated than that. It's just like a standard install. Once you're done, it will put an icon on your desktop. 
that will look just like this one right here and you'll be ready to go. You just double click this icon and we'll move on to the next steps. When you first come in here, it may come up with a thing that asks you if you wanna set it up. You can just cancel out of that, close it out. We're gonna go up to profile and we're gonna go ahead and select new. We can just call this record and click okay. You wanna make sure that the show auto wizard configuration is unchecked and boom. We're all set and ready to set this up. Next thing we're gonna do is go down into settings and we're going to go to audio. Make sure that everything here is disabled that means we're not going to get any audio at all. We're going to be able to set it up ourselves. Next, we want to go into video and set this up for the resolution that we want to produce our video in. So you can go ahead and use the drop down to select this. If you want to go 4K, all you have to do is go up here and put your 4K statistics in here. It's really pretty simple. All I have to do is go 3840 by 2160, and there we go. And we want to match our output scaled resolution to the exact same thing. So there we go. We want to select the frames per second that we physically want to record in. So for me, I would record in 2997, but you may want to record in 30 or 60. Depends on what you're recording. If you're recording video game content and that sort of stuff, then recording in 60 is a good idea. Otherwise, you're probably fine with 2997 or 30 frames per second, whichever appeals most to you. I'm going to go ahead and click apply on that so we know our settings are all good to go. And we're going to go into output. And here we want to go up to output mode and go from simple to advanced. And we don't really care about the streaming setup. That doesn't matter. We're going to go into recording and we're going to set this up to record our video. Now you've got your type here and you can change that, but there's no reason to here. Recording path, where you want your videos to actually go. So you just browse to the location where you want your videos to go. And I always record all of my stuff in quick edit so we can save it right there. And now we wanna get our record format and I'm gonna go ahead and choose MP4 because that is generally speaking the easiest thing to edit then I'm gonna choose my encoder. I have an NVIDIA graphics card, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose NVIC. If you do not have a graphics card on here, then you're probably going to be choosing X264. To do that, you have to go over here to streaming and select it right here. Then you can go into recording and you just select use stream encoder and it's going to set that all up for you. You're going to have much more difficulty recording in high quality on the X264 encoder. However, most of the settings are gonna be exactly the same. So I'm gonna drop this down and I'm gonna go ahead and select the NVIC encoder and we're gonna leave our audio encoder exactly the same. Now we can record a bunch of different audio tracks, but for this, we're probably fine with just the one and nothing else here needs to be modified. We're gonna go down here to rate control we're going to use CBR, which is constant bit rate. It will create smaller files than a lot of the other stuff, but also really high quality. Because we're recording in 4K, we're going to set this to 60,000 kilobits per second, and nothing else needs to be changed. If we were going to go with X264, we would select Use Stream Encoder, and then we would have to go over here and set this up. So if we're going to go with the Stream Encoder, it's X264. We're still going to want to do 60,000 kilobits per second, and very fast is probably just fine. You can select the profile and high, and that'll actually give you a very high quality recording, but it may actually bug your computer down a little bit depending upon what type of stuff you're recording. And in order to modify that, you can do that right here, or you can adjust your bit rate down to get the visuals that you're looking for. You may actually have to, if you're using X264, go to 1920 by 1080, and you can adjust your bitrate down to 40,000 kilobits per second or something like that, which will still give you a high quality recording, but it won't tax your computer so much. Like I said before, having the NVEC encoder with an NVIDIA graphics card is by far going to give you the best quality. So we're gonna go ahead and select that right here, make sure all of our stuff is correct and we're good to go we're going to go ahead and apply that at this point if you only have one monitor you're going to want to go into general and you're going to want to click hide obs windows from screen capture and what that'll do is that'll make sure that the stuff underneath this window 
is what's going to show on screen when you're recording, even when you bring up OBS. We're gonna click OK, and we're zoomed way in here because it was set at 1080 before. So we're gonna go ahead and hold down the space bar, and you can see the icon turns to a little hand, and we just use the mouse wheel so that we can see our screen. And we're all set up and ready to do our recording. So all we need to do is add a source here. So we're gonna click the plus, and we're gonna go to our display capture because the easiest way to do this is to capture the display. And if you have multiple displays, it certainly makes that a lot easier. We're gonna go ahead and click OK. And all we have to do is select the monitor that we wanna see. So in this case, I'm gonna select this 720 monitor right here and click OK. And we're gonna go ahead and open it up. Now, if we right click here, we can go back into the properties and you can see that we can capture the cursor on that monitor. So if I click OK here, once I have it stretched out, you can see my mouse is right there doing everything it's supposed to do. Now, anything that I put on this monitor is going to be captured right here for our recording. The only problem we really have now is we need some audio. You can see there's nothing in here. So obviously you're going to need a microphone for this and you just wanna make sure that you have it plugged into your computer and all you're gonna to need to do is click the plus right here and you're going to go to audio input capture. You can just call this mic and click okay. And drop this down and select a microphone that is currently connected to your computer and click okay. And now you can see that the audio is working its magic right over here. We can adjust the levels with this right here. Now, if we just wanted to record whatever was on this screen, all we have to do is click start recording and we're good to go. But maybe you wanna actually record some stuff with your camera. And so let me show you how to add a camera in here real quick if you want. We're gonna go ahead and click the plus and we're going to go to video capture device and we'll just call this cam and click okay. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and drop this down and select the camera that we want and right now we're currently on the camera, you're gonna to wanna to slide this all the way down to the bottom, select use custom audio device, and then you're gonna to wanna to drop this down and select the audio device or the microphone that you're using. So there we go, when I click okay, you're gonna notice now we have two microphones in here. We have one coming in from cam and one coming in through mic. And so if you're adding a camera to your thing, you don't need to add a separate microphone. When you add your camera, it will automatically add your microphone. Unless, of course, you're working on Mac, in which case you have to add your microphone separately. Now we can just stretch this up so it's big and we're ready to go. We can record stuff with our face. And then when we wanna record stuff with the background, we can just go ahead and turn that off using the little eyeball here. And then we can record stuff in the background. All you have to do to record is go ahead and click start recording. It's going to create files that look just like this. Let's go ahead and put on the details so you can get a look at how these record. Once I click stop recording, it's going to finish up and be right here. And all we have to do then is move it to the editing software of choice Clip it up and we're ready to go. Now, if you decide to appear on camera in your screen capture tutorials, the same rules apply as for live action tutorials. Use a tripod and have lighting so it looks good. It's not necessary for you to actually appear on camera for either style of tutorial. However, I would recommend that you do because it does create a better connection with your audience than just some disembodied voice. Now that we have our footage, all we have to do is put it together so we can release it. And it's not as complicated as people make it out to be. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. Now we're gonna be using DaVinci Resolve to edit our footage. It's totally free and really powerful. There is a link down below so you can download it and check it out for yourself. Let me show you how to install and use it. This is the DaVinci Resolve download page and we just scroll down here and you see there's two different versions. We're gonna click on the free download. You can select which one you want. Now just keep in mind that this one over here, I know it doesn't tell you that, but this is not necessarily the free version. You're looking for this one right here. You're just gonna click. You're gonna to have to fill this stuff out in order to get access to it. Not a big deal. I've never gotten an email from them, so it's not much to really worry about. 
Then you just click register and download and you can download it right here, but it does automatically flip up to the top. It takes a few seconds for this to download. And once it's done, you just go into your downloads and you can just go ahead and right click and extract it. And then we're gonna go right here and we're just gonna double click on it. You're going to get an administrative prompt that you can't see, but just click yes. Now it's going to ask you what you actually want to install. So there is an audio utility and Blackmagic Raw Player and DaVinci Resolve and some control panels. You don't have to mess with any of this, although you don't actually need all of it either. And you just click install. It's going to run through the installer. Then you can just click next and accept the agreement and next it's going to give you the path and there's no reason to change this so you could just click next and then install it takes a couple of moments for this to run through once it's done you just click finish and then you've got to restart your computer before you actually run it and that's really all there is to the install next all we have to do is open up davinci resolve there's going to be an icon that looks just like this on your desktop it's going to take a couple seconds for it to start up once it's started, you're gonna get a screen that's similar to this and we wanna create a new project. We're just gonna call this Project Tutorial and click Create. And then we're gonna go ahead and flip over here to the editing screen. Now it's really easy to bring your clips in. You just go into the directory where you created your clips. You can see I have them right here. So I'm just gonna drag it in and we can go ahead and change the frame rate right there. And we'll drag this one in and we'll drag this one in and what we want to do once we get our clips in here is go up into file and we want to go to our project settings and take a look at what it thinks we're set up to do so we have our timeline here our frame rate set properly we did select 23.976 however we don't have our resolution set properly. So we're gonna go ahead and select the 4K resolution that we filmed the video in. If you're filming in 1080, you just wanna select 1080 and the frame rate that we're talking about down here. So once we select all this stuff and make sure that it is set up the way we want, we can save it and we can easily just drag our clip right in here like this. So let's just go over the basics of DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna go ahead and start with this DR export and I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna create a new timeline using the selected clips and we'll call this one SCVO DR export and click create and that shows up right down here. So this is the clip that we're gonna be working with and you can scroll right and left with this bar down here and you can zoom in and out of your clip by using the plus and minus right here. And then this is the only other things that you're going to use for editing. This one is to kind of move your timeline, your playhead around and move this around. And this one is to cut your clip. You can adjust the volume of your clip by mousing over and you'll see these two arrows come up when you get to the volume aspect of it and you can just click on it and drag it up or down to increase or decrease the volume when the clip is selected you'll see a little bar over here that has all of the information so you can zoom into your clip you can position the clip left or right up or down right here zoom in right here you can change the rotation angle of your clip right here the pitch and yaw which are more 3D aspects of the clip. You can adjust the crop and all kinds of other stuff. Change speed of the clip, all that kind of thing. Um, changing the speed of the clip is definitely something that comes in handy when you're doing tutorials. So I'll definitely show you how to do that. But those are all the basics of the clips that you're gonna have here. So how do you edit? Well, it's pretty simple. We can drag this over here while we have it in the arrow to remove the space at the beginning, drag it back. Now when you drag your playhead over the clip, you're gonna hear the voice. We're gonna go ahead and export. When you are editing, you probably wanna use headphones because then you're gonna be able to hear all the clicks and pops and all that sort of stuff. But what I like to do is 
basically go and remove any pauses or anything like that. Paying attention obviously to what you're seeing on the screen. So you just select your cutter and you cut and then you right click and you can just ripple cut and it will remove out of there. And then what you do is you just listen to your clip to make sure it flows right. A couple of extra skills that you may want to have. You can actually go ahead and bring music over here. We can bring in a second clip and I want to show you how to use either of these. So if you wanted to overlay some sort of footage on top of what you're doing so you just see the footage, well you could just go ahead and drag that in over top of the other footage and we can just remove the volume from there and now you see that it'll just flip over to that footage over top of the other stuff so we'll still hear the audio down here and we'll see the video over top so that is how you would overlay any sort of b-roll or anything like that it's very very simple if we wanted to add audio to this clip we just go ahead and bring in the audio just like everything else we can just drag it and put it wherever we want so we can put our audio right down here. We can adjust the volume. You can move this up or down. Basically, put our audio in here and adjust it any way we want. Now, over here, we have this right here, which will disable a video track. So if there's something you just don't want to see, you can disable it. And you can mute audio tracks with this right here. Mute the track. You can mute this track. So that's how you add audio like music or something like that underneath your video or B-roll over top of any of your video. Now we don't have to have our B-roll cover the whole screen. We can adjust that pretty simply. We'll go over here into video and we can just zoom it like that. And then we can position it anywhere we want on the screen. So if we want to have a little clip that we're talking about we can have it hover over here if we want to. Now the last little bit of super simple editing that I want to show is transitions. So if we go up here into effects, we have video transitions right here. So we could just take this right here and you just drag it over here into in between any of the clips. And there we go. So now when we play these clips, You'll see a little transition in between the two of them. And there we go. We can make this transition longer. And it'll clip a little bit, but that's, that's the way that's going to look. And we can select the transition and go up here and adjust any of the features or anything like that that we want. So something like ease, we'll ease it in, ease it out. And that'll just ramp up the speed or slow down the speed depending upon how you want it. You can reverse it. You can feather it in. There's all kinds of really cool stuff that you could do with transitions. But as you just saw, they're just as simple as dragging the transition that you want in there and putting it onto your clips. You can just basically select any clip and hit delete and it will delete those clips. You may have something that you want to speed up. In this case, I do a little bit of extracting, but there's no actual language over top. I, I can just right click on this and I can go to change clip speed. I'm going to go ahead and ripple the timeline. I don't need to change the pitch because there is no audio here. And I can just ramp up the speed like that and click change. Now sometimes you get weird little audio artifacts in there. So I just like to go ahead and turn the volume all the way down. And now what we'll get is a nice little speedy clip right through there. And it works very well. So that's how you change the speed of a clip. Once you have everything all edited up here on the edit page, we're going to go ahead and export the video. So we're going to go to deliver. And when you get over here, I like to export to the YouTube. It's really easy. It's already set up here for us. We're going to go and select 4K. We're going to put the title of our video in. So this one is the intro. We're going to go ahead and select a location for our video. And that's pretty much all we have to do. So now we can just go down here and add the video to our render queue. Once you have all the clips over here that you want to export, you can go ahead and just select them and click render all. 
It will take a few moments and render those clips out. It just runs through them. As you can see, the percentages move. Once it's finished, all your clips will be rendered out. Now, I like to render out each section completely edited. So the intro and the close and each of my screen capture voiceovers. I'll export each of those out as their own individual sections. And then I will load those rendered sections back into DaVinci and bump those clips up together to see if I want to add a very simple transition or anything like that to them. But it doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. All of these things are the ultimate of the basics of what you need to edit. Please do not worry when you're just starting out doing tutorials that you need all these graphics and all these transitions or anything fancy at all. If the information that you're providing is good, the most important thing that it's clear and concise for the viewer so that they get the information that they searched for. And if you do that, YouTube will reward you because your viewers will watch longer because they're getting the information that they want in a clear, easy way. And when your viewers like your video, YouTube will share it out. So be more focused on providing a clear and concise tutorial than you are in worrying about the actual video effects or anything fancy in the edit. It will serve you well and you will learn how to use these editing tools better over time and become a better editor. You're not gonna start out like that, but don't worry. None of that stuff is a requirement to being successful on YouTube. Some of the biggest tutorial channels out there use almost no extra editing. They basically just show you how to do whatever it is you want to learn. It doesn't need to be any fancier than that. You're bumping clips together to tell people how to do something. Now you know everything that you need to know to produce your own tutorials on YouTube. I can't wait to see what you come up with. If you want to learn more about OBS audio and video, you can check these videos out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.